Hi everyone, uh, here's a little pile of planks that I cut on the sawmill. I need to do some hedging here. Uh, I need an edger. <laughs> it's uh, quite a big job doing some hedging on sawmill there. Here's a pile of wood. I have like a few more like that. A lot of sawdust. Well, today we're going to talk about sometimes you get issues with the blade moving up and down we'll show you here I don't know if you will see it but let me zoom in I don't know if I will go slow can you see on that side of this plank here on the uh, on that side of that plank here look closely you will see it's doing some waving there all the way some parts you will see more clearly but those waving was caused let me show you uh, those waving were caused by this boy bad boy there what happened is this guide is quite long it's about 30 inch long it goes all the way here to that post there so when the blade was getting dull what happened is it was wobbling like crazy because it's about half or half an inch lower than the two uh, wheels and this one too is about half an inch uh, the reason why I want my blade to sit on those guides and be straight level and you see that little gadget there I will talk about it later that's to get your blade equal parallel to your bed there so what happened is when the blade was getting dull it would wobble that part there up and down so what I did to fix that up well I went the easy way let me show you here I could have changed all the the system there and put a thicker part the uh, uh, thicker uh, guide there but what I did here let me show you I don't know if you will see it I will zoom you see there is a threaded rod that I fixed there and it sit over the guide well that's preventing the uh, it's preventing this one here to wobble so no more wobbling so I did cut it there I did have issues with the blade going up and down I did this little gadget here and because when the blade was dull what happened is if the blade is is not set up right well it would have tendency if the blade let's say was like up like that it will go up if it was down like that it would go down so what I did I did this little piece here there's a little screw underneath and you just tie it loose you don't tie it too tight and you take let me take this tape you take your measuring tape and you measure in the back and in the front you put it equal in the middle you measure in the back and the front and you make sure you're uh, on the bed here um, you need the, the bed to be level there uh, that's another issue that I did find but uh, really nice little gadget you can do it yourself this is a uh, a piece of uh, leftover from my 2x4 there and I did take the buffer slice it weld the uh, little nuts underneath or you just could just put uh, a nut a loose nut there and when you tight it it's straight tight or just buy it that little gadget that I made there you can you're able to get it on uh, cook web website I think I think some other companies sell those little gadget there 
uh, really nice to have so I adjust my blade so it level it is level now uh, well it was level in the beginning because I did make this uh, in the beginning so yeah so the only issue I did have is that little guy there was giving me problem um, another problem with you see the wood the waving on the wood there that I show you well the ground here was moving with the frost the spring so during the time that uh, the snow meltdown and the ground got the frost there the level the all the frame here was moving up and down I need to sit this on a cement slab because uh, I don't want to have those issue anymore and I need to build myself a, a shack to put this in, in here or a shed so uh, no more rain no more snow on working area here we'll be able to mill when it snows and rains but uh, that's some issue I did get so if you're having same issue with your wood there and it's making some little nice little wave like this here well take the time to check your mill out because uh, yeah that's what was I don't know if you will see there I'm trying to show you you I see it on the little screen on the camera but you see the wobbling it's not a big issue because I need to put this piece back on the mill and it's already having a good distance what happened is my blade was going up so uh, I just need to set it on the mill uh, this is one inch and a half by five inch and a half two by six that you get at the store I did mill this pile here at that setting so only thing I need to do is put it back on the mill slice it at five inch and a half and everything's going to be fine so uh, yeah that's some little issue I did have I'm using a whole motor so the 9.5 uh, fail so I did put a Tecumseh uh, this is a hate horsepower you're gonna say man that's that's a low power horsepower engine but uh, work fine you just go slower when you cut uh, I did uh, change the pulley there the other motor was a 3.8 this is a 3.75 inch diameter pulley so this way the speed when you're getting that little pulley there on your motor smaller it will reduce the speed and if you're getting it a little bit bigger will increase the speed of the motor so just do the mat 2.75 there and the other one is 18 18.75 inch so and the other one in front same size 18.75 inch will give you the speed if you want to do the mat you will I did I did count it I don't remember the numbers it's uh, it's working fine I have another motor there I have two more 10 horsepower engine I could easily put on but there's one snowblower still good one it's Troy Bill one of my friend gave it to me need a carburetor cleanup the other one too the other one is a whole snowblower I was thinking about putting the engine on my uh, tractor there my vintage tractor take a 10 horsepower put it on and put the 16 horsepower here on my uh, sawmill I might change look at this brand new winch about a hundred hour on the mill and all the those teeth there are all getting uh, 
just look at that it's all uh, ground grind but uh, I might put a electric winch so that's that's all the little issues I did have I did change my bucket here I did the, this piece here broke so I put a metal one so uh, yeah and uh, that's it that's all that it is to it and you, it's just cool guys it's uh, it's my I did I did work in sawmill before but uh, it's my first time with a band sawmill like this and I really like it I'm glad that I did it it's it's a it's a learning all the time you need to uh, check everything out uh, every every time there's a little thing that happens like you see the waving on the wood there you need to find out those uh, little issue there and fix those uh, as fast as you can but uh, I see a lot of uh, I'm on like five face group uh, sawmill there on uh, Facebook there and uh, I see a lot of guys changing brand of mill or because they have issues sometimes uh, you need I'm not saying I'm a good mechanic but you need to have a mechanic background to work with those equipment because I did have issues a little sometimes on the blades like you saw the, the waving there uh, it's kind of uh, hard to uh, to figure out especially me here the movement of the ground there uh, I was wondering is it the movement of the ground the blade not too tight uh, don't over tight your blades me uh, I think the uh, blades uh, ask for about 28 foot-pound torque on the torque there I put around 22 to 25 reason why uh, as soon as the blade gets dull I see the effect right away on the wood so I have a motorcycle riding in the back here <laughs> I don't know if you hear it but I hear it quite well and uh, yeah uh, I don't put too much pressure on the blade because that's the reason you see all the effect right away and I prefer to change my blade and sharp it and then I change the blade every two hours of milling and I try to clean the back uh, of the uh, let me show you here what I mean the um, the band wheel here there's an accumulation of sawdust that gets here same thing on the other side so uh, if you have sawdust here let's say one millimeter of accumulation and you leave it there and same thing on the other one well all the sawdust is behind there will tight your blade a lot more so uh, this is giving this gave stress to your blade uh, all the time and that's the reason and I do have a lot of sawdust building up um, I'm milling uh, uh, spruce and um, Uh, I did mill some I don't know how to say it in Fr uh, I say it in French it's uh, the Pruche the name in English I don't know it but uh, I did uh, cut some cedar <laughs> that's something I want to talk to you about cedar yeah uh, and some uh, I did mill some 
poplar and some aspen and some uh, uh, I don't remember the other kind but there's a lot of resin in those wood and uh, what it does is it's uh, it's putting it's jamming the sawdust there on the blade so and I have to put a little bit more water with soap to get the blade clean so it cuts easier but uh, yeah I need to talk to you about cedar I don't know if you ever try to take let's say a log of cedar and try to split it when you hit the knots there in the wood uh, no matter what you take hacks and you jam it with the take a sledgehammer and jam it on it and hit it to split that piece of wood there and well I was cutting cedar and after an hour the blade was sharp I did sharp it and install it on the mill start milling after an hour well the blade was dull put another one an hour later it was dull but the thing is guys I was going like crazy fast on my cut and every time that blade hits the uh, the knots in the wood well I figure out well it might be because the um, the blade was making the same thing as the hacks you know getting stopped so I stopped going fast and you know what the blade lasted for about two hours so go figure and some of you will say well cedar might have dirt on them or well I have some piece of cedar there there's no bark on it and the one I was putting on the mill no barks no dust no uh, no rocks no dirt so and I do have a nice little brush here that I take uh, it's, uh, and I like it because I have a round shape to it so when you're cleaning your piece of wood well it gets the contour of your logs but uh, and the same thing here with my mill I don't know if you remember but when I'm milling when I do my first cut I will get in dirt but all the rest of the cut I'm on in clean wood so uh, I did figure out that if I go too fast in those cedar well uh, when you hit those little knots at full speed it's hard on your blade because I think I did mill uh, hardwood I don't remember what PC was but uh, I did mill hardwood and uh, it lasted like a few hours there uh, but cedar they're clean and when you go to those fast it will dull your blade like if there's a lot of knots in there I have a few pieces of cedar there was didn't have any knots and they were really nice uh, was you could feel it when you mill uh, it would go easier was milling faster and but uh, yeah cedar is quite special it's a soft wood it's a lot softer than uh, uh, spruce or uh, uh, poplar or uh, the other one I said is aspen there uh, or pine but it's a nice wood not for framing but uh, to make some furniture I do some I did make some chairs with uh, uh, as you don't as you don't chair with cedar and makes really nice chair they're light uh, I think they're what seven eight years old now those chair and still good not any uh, 
damage to them. But uh, yeah, milling is, is cool. So I'm gonna finish doing some maintenance on the mill here. Let me show you something here, the little bearing. And I do have around a hundred hours on it. My little bearing here. The cover is damaged. I'm missing a few bearings in there and it was sitting right there. The other one the on the other side is still good. But uh, I did grease my big bearings here. I think I'm gonna put some grease on this. It stops doing damage to those, to those little teeth here. But that's it for now. If you have questions, put them down below in the des in the comment section. And uh, I did receive my blade like yesterday, not uh, not yesterday, but Friday. We're Saturday today, yeah. And uh, I get my blade in uh, Sherbrooke from Theo at Montbois.ca. It's uh, that's the name of his. Uh, is stored there on internet so he's selling Range Road sawmill and he's selling Hudson I think he have another brain I don't remember the brain I saw it but uh, really nice guy good service uh, I did buy 10 first blade were uh, Ripper 37 and those here are wood max so I can't wait to try them and see how they cut and uh, yeah work really nice if you're thinking of buying or building you should <laughs> be aware that there's a lot of uh, little mechanic going on and some setting adjustment needs to be made sometimes on the blade it's not magic uh, you buy a sawmill there I, I see a lot of people buying any brand I, I watch so much uh, YouTube channel there when they're adjusting the tension there some have issues with blade uh, getting off and well you need to make sure that the back of your blade here is flush and on each wheel before you start milling oh, you have a little friend here come see me and uh, yeah wood doors something I saw that people complain ah oh, it's not tough it's not good well see the mark of the blades going on when the blade pops out it did happen to me a few times there check this one here the blade did get off like two or three times there and you see the two marks on the door well if would have been metal there yeah the blade's gone or you need sharpening or with wood store there blade doesn't get dull and reuse them so yeah uh, I can't wait to cut bigger trees. I need to put the 16 horsepower on there, but uh, I did mill those big pieces here are 21 in 21 foot long, the longer one. I did mill like 17 of those big uh, big tree there. There's a piece of uh, that's poplar. It went banana, yeah. I use it to put the tarps on the uh, on the wood, to keep the tarps on the wood because uh, it's a little bit banana there. <laughs> so that's it for now. If you have questions, don't forget put them down. Work safe and use those guys. Uh, make a big difference on the because the mill make a lot of noise <laughs> and work safe and till next time